want all to have a little discussion to bring to your awareness certain minute safety concerns and issues that you may or may not have recognized when you visited the mine pits. Each group visited a mine pit yes. and your focus may or may not have been on taking up the sample but also as a prospector, as a miner, you have to be mindful of the um, mining pit safety concerns and what are the what what is wrong in what you're seeing. Okay? So I've taken some book, some drone and a footage of at least some of the mines and I will put it up on the screen for us to have a discussion in the, with respect to the safety concerns and what should be done. I would also want to have the mines officer here to be part of this discussion so I would invite them to be here. So they can take the necessary action based on the recommendations. And then, at the basic level of the safety issues that you will encounter um, at a small or medium scale mining operation. Okay? And I have with me the district engineer um, Mr. Samantha Thompson and the mines officer Romano and the mines officer Mr. Romano Mohammed um, and they will um, they will be here to observe what we found what we found via the capture of the site using a drone which is what you would have seen. So what I'm showing here is what you would have seen in the pit. And we will have a discussion with respect to the safety issues and um, what are the recommendations going forward so that we can ensure that these mine pits are safe but also in a practical way um, allow for the miner to do their work okay so there is um, safety which is of highest priority and there is also um, issue of practicality of your recommend of the recommendation which has to do with is it doable there will be concern of course I am advised that costs has to be borne by the miner, irrespective of the cost. If the pit is not safe and it poses a risk to life and limb, then it's the miner's responsibility to incur whatever cost is necessary to bring the mine into a safe state. All right. I will start by first looking at a model or a gold mine. Okay. What we should be seeing in a model mine at a medium scale level. This one is at Vincent Lomino in Red Hole. Now, this one here. You can see there was mining at this location for a prolonged period of time. Okay? As a matter of fact, the whole White Tower Red Hole area has been mined for a number of years. Alright? Now, the drone footage here is showing you the lateral extent to see if there's any uh, interaction of the mining waste with the environment. But what we notice here is that all of the wastewater is contained in existing mining pits okay so there is no issue there as it relates to tailings 
from what we are seeing here. We are seeing um, standing pools of, of, of tailings that is even settled as you notice the greenish color in the water is as a result of settlement of the clay particles. Sometimes you will see it turns blue. Here you see it's green, the other side it's brownish and that is due to variation in settlement rates of the clay particles. As more settlement occurs, the water will change its color due to the dispersion of light by the water particles, the water molecules and the clay molecules that are present. Okay? That is what gives it that bluish tinge or that greenish tinge as it keeps standing for a period of time. It's not a chemical reaction. Alright? So we can see here, you know, it's pretty much this site here will be good for revegetation, meaning to say you can plant some acacia trees and in a, maybe two to three years all of this can become a forest. Alright? Now at the top here we see a nice plant view of this pit of Vincent Lomino. You see the pit here, okay? And you get a good look at what the benches are like. Now one excavator is on this bench here, cutting and expanding. What they're trying to do is to open this ledge here, take off this overboard. But this material I see shown here is actually the gravel. The gravel is about how many feet, guys? Group Group, group two went to this location or group one? Group two. Group two. How many feet of gravel you got here? Huh? Like three meters of gravel. But three meters of gravel. On the forest bench. I think they even have more gravel here. What they work is all this material here. From this this edge here, come right down. They bump it up. I think it's about 40 feet of gravel they work in. The gravel is not the kind of gravel that you are seeing in terms of um, the, the, the kind of a quartz kind of gravel. It's a different kind of material that they're working. We're going to show how to, what a medium scale operation looks like. And we're going we're gonna to examine what are the safety concerns of the mine if you, have, if you notice any and what are the environmental considerations at the site. Well, looking at the picture, you would notice that, um, what do you notice? Let me first ask you, what do you notice? Tell me what do you see? Do you see a pit? Do you see drudges? Yes. How many drudges do you see? Yeah. Eleven drudges. Yeah. How many? Eleven. Ten drudges? Yeah. Okay. So this is a this is a mine pit somewhere. Somewhere in Guyana. A model mine pit. Okay? Um, and why do I say it's a model mine pit, medium scale? It's because if you notice carefully, um, you have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drudges all in one hole, yes, and their sluice box are on that dam down there. Okay? Everybody see the dam here? And they're dumping their their their, their tailings into an enclosed tailing spawn. That's the first thing that is necessary in a mining operation, that your waste must be dumped into an enclosed tailing spawn, not an open or a breach or a partially enclosed. It must be 100% enclosed. Here you see this is a 100% enclosed. There is no water getting out, except for when there is, except for rainfall, there is a spillway via the use of a coca. You know those coca like we saw a while ago off in Joe I told? And that will cater for excess rainfall 
and accessory in fall that will um, accessory in fall that will cause um, excess water build up inside of this pit, this tailing spot, and therefore the cocoa will be di discharging clear water, which will get top. And when rain falling, people don't dredge. Is that so? Actively. When the warren is falling continuously, one day, two day, three day, you park. That's why the pit is flooded. That is why they don't dredge. They would like to, but they can't because it will get flooded out. So you will find that whenever there is rain falling to the extent that it requires the spillway to come into use, that is to discharge water, the supernatant of the tailing spawn, okay? You will find that there is no active mining or dredging in the pit and therefore there is no slurry coming into the tailing spawn. So what therefore will be coming out of the, the cocoa will be clear water, excess rain water that is clear coming from the top. If they were dredging in the pit, and they were putting muddy water in the tailing spawn and the rain is falling at the same time they are mixing then what might, might be coming out would have been muddy water and that would have been an issue okay but because of the fact that when rain is falling excessively the pits are being flooded and no work is allowed no work can happen even if the miner wants to before they can work they have to first dry the pit pop out all the water and then they can go to work. So the cocoa is well suited for that. So we're now doing a flyover of this model mine. You can notice also the tailing spawn has a spillway <coughs> right around here, which will then spill into here, and then there's a spillway that will go into this one. Alright, so you have like two spillways. One going to the other, the other one going to the other. You notice here is a natural creek that was there before, okay? But due to the fact that it was mining in this area for a number of years, and I guess over about 20 to 30 years, um, you know, I would, I would recommend that this site or this, this pit is a model site, okay? Good. I will now let us have a look at other operations. And I think one of the things I, I wanted to show you here is the benching. So let us go back to this to have a look at the benching. Now you notice here how many benches do you see? You see this brownish material? That's at the top, is not so? Then it cuts and then there's a bench right along here. That's where that material cuts off. Then from this top here, you have a bench, a face here, is not so? Then you have a ledge and then a bench again with a ledge, a bench, with a ledge and here is what you have another bench but because here is where they're bumping up the stuff with a mock pile okay you take the excavator and you're actively um, creating a mock pile or a bump you see you bump up the stuff and that's where you check down the bump okay what you notice These benches does not exceed 15 feet. How would you know? You can look at the scale, some object on the ground that can give you a scale. For example, this star pole in here is about 10 feet in length. All right? And if I put a star pole and I turn it like that, and I get about one and a half the star pole in here, fitting from here to here. So that is why I can use. I can use an object of known size. And, and fit it into a certain space to see how it grows. Okay? So that is how I can I can measure from a picture, give you an approximation of the height of your bench, 
and even the width of the ledge. Okay? From this picture, you can notice also here the, the ledge is here, but here the ledge is not continuous. Therefore, there is a need for some cleaning up down here. But in general, I will give this site a 95% pass. Okay? Still work to be done. Okay? The tailing spawn is, is completely enclosed. Okay? And you notice something here? That's a coco. Yeah. A wrong wood with a hole inside. And that's where water is coming out of. Alright? And that is what is needed. And you don't need a whole set of things to follow the regulations. You need simple things. You need benches. You need benches that does not exceed 15 to 20 feet. Why do I say it does not exceed 15 to 20 feet? I said to people before, you know, engineering is a design or, or, or it, it has to go with calculation. It has to do with measurement. An engineer has to do the design of the mind kit. Okay? Um, however, however, the fact of the matter is that whilst an engineer design is necessary. We can put in certain design recommendations that will adequately, when considering the engineering requirements or what the engineering aspects are, it would have met those engineering design. I mean to say, if I were to say to an engineer, design safely what this bit should be, he will come up with those same that those measurements or lengths. Okay? So these are safety nets that we're setting. We know that if you safely have a bench at 15 feet, you know, I can guarantee you to an extent that it is going to be safe um, given the fact that you will have to still check it with some engineering calculations. Alright? Now, Medium scale operations have to be designed by an engineer. That's the second point that people need to understand. A what is a medium scale operation? Once you got like two to three judges in one hole and above, you are in the realm of medium scale. It is defined in the, the mining, mining act and it is defined as how much volume of material is mined right in 24 hours but that equates to in a layman way about two to three mining operation all concentrated in one site okay everybody clear good good now So this is the pit, I can see one bench, I can see another bench. But what I'm not seeing, you see what they're doing, they're, they're mining in this direction where the excavators are. But what we're not seeing is any benching on this side of the pit. Right. This is a medium scale operation, okay? And like I said, a medium scale operation has to be designed by an engineer. And it has to be designed with certain safety features into it. You know, you cannot have a situation where you go into a house and the house is leaking and you only want to fix the part where your bed is because you're ready to sleep and then when you're ready to cook you go and fix the part where the kitchen is because you're ready to cook but that's the kind of approach that is being done here meaning to say that when they're ready to work this southern face 
they try to fix this this part but this eastern face is one drop about 70 to 80 feet or even 90 feet and it is not designed I can show you a little more good so now we're coming down into the pit and we can see better what we're talking about there it is this still picture tells you the whole story the benching is happening on the eastern the southern face where the excavators are but when you look to the east or to your left hand side on this side here you just see a line where a previous bench was and a line where a previous bench was but really and truly it's all one drop now the question you have to ask yourself is this acceptable is this the, the, the is this what is required for a medium scale operation Question first have to be asked is this within the safety design of the pit? No. Now you're not an engineer, so you wouldn't know. But you're looking at it and you say no, because in your opinion it appears to be unsafe. However, the engineer will have to utilize their geotechnical skills, and I know. The GGMC is right now training a group of engineers in geotechnical engineering with Mr. Charles Series. And they will tell you that you need to force out an undisturbed sample of this material here and do some triaxial tests on it to get some engineering parameters like the cohesion and the undrained shear strength. And based on that, they will design, they will determine well if this is the height of the, the block of material and this is the extent and therefore you can establish the volume of the block whether there is some potential or what's the factor of safety for this site and besides that they, they, it has to be designed with a slope I bring this out and I bring this out in the presence of all my colleagues who are mandated to overlook these operations for one main purpose to be to, to recognize that there is a problem and solution needs to be found not to say that you know, this operation must go and be stopped immediately. But certainly to say that this operation must be given technical advice by engineers who are competent to give such advice. Geotechnical engineering design for this site. As a matter of fact, I could recall reading the Commission of Inquiry report and one of the recommendations that came out was that they say miners are willing to pay the miners are willing to pay for the technical services that are needed to bring their pit into conformity and safety standards that is to say if uh, on the stock triaxial sample needs to be taken for a triaxial test to be done which will cost about $240,000 for the test then the miner has to pay for it. And if it means that the design, the engineer needs to design for this space and for the entire pit what the design should be, then the miner has to pay for it. And what it means before that is that the miner needs to know this stuff that he's mining, which is his ore, he needs to have an idea do I have it here? 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 
and so he'll have an extent, an aerial extent as to what the core body is like and based on that we can calculate the volume and then based there my pit design on that. I will say again medium scale, medium scale operation, this again is a medium scale operation needs to be scrutinized with, great, with greater scrutiny. It was a medium scale operation that killed 11 people in Mousy. Okay? Medium scale operations must be scrutinized with the greatest scrutiny. Not to scrutinize so as to put people out of business, but to scrutinize so that people's lives will be saved. We are not concerned about the business part as yet. We are concerned more with the safety part. And this has to be considered by the engineer to determine what the design should be for this. And I would like to make that as my first recommendation to the engineer and the mines officers here to follow up on that. Okay? To follow up with the competent geotechnical engineers. I have to follow up with any engineer, but the competent, because this is a geotechnical problem. And we need to have some geotechnical work done. So what I'm basically saying is, talk to the owner of the operation, let him know that this eastern face is unsafe. Let him also understand that he will need to employ or procure the service of a competent engineer and prepare some design, right, for this site. And that will involve, this is Vincent Lumino, and that will involve him taking the engineer coming in and taking sample and him making, doing some sampling of the gravel layer. And sampling of the gravel layer is pretty simple. You did that today. Yes, sir. That is why we do it. We are going to take, we have taken samples of the gravel layer and we will analyze those samples in the lab. So the students have taken a sample of the gravel, they bottle it down. How much, how much kilograms of sample you took? Okay. 10 kilograms or 22 pounds, is that so? Yeah. And that is why you're going to bottle down and that black sand will be analyzed in the lab to see the gold grain of this gravel. What the, the mind needs to do is to do something similar. He needs to have an understanding of the gold grade of his gravel. He needs to know the extent of his gravel. What's the width? What's the thickness? What's the length? Just as what I instruct the students to do. He also needs to know, based on that, well, what is the ounces of gold that I can get out of my gravel? He also needs to calculate the overboard that needs to be stripped. And based on the design, he will have the engineer will have to calculate the cost of stripping and basically do a, 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 a mining plan. What am I saying? As the administrator of the Guyana Mining School, advocating change, okay, and giving this advice, not just to the students, but also to my colleagues, to advise them. Today. Like an hour and a half ago. All right? Good. So let us proceed with the video. Good. So the, the, the drone is coming down so you can see clearly, you know, what we're talking about here. No bench. All right? If this whole block of things slip and the men here, you're dead. That's what I'm trying to say. And how would you know if it's going to slip? It is based on the cohesive strength of the material or the shear strength. And that has to be determined by a geotechnical engineering test. This is a serious matter. It looks simple. It has been looking simple for a number of years. But I'm flagging it today. And I'm recording on video. And I'm telling you, advice the mine owner. And not only advice, seek advice from your manager on this matter on the next step. Okay? I'm recommending that the miner 
procure immediately the service of an engineer who will carry out the necessary engineering tests and proceed with a design that must be reviewed by the GGMC mine institution. All right? Before this mine can continue to operate. All right? Until it can continue. That means to say there should be some order to cease operation until that is in place. But I'm not making that decision. That is for the mines engineer and the mines officer to make in consultation with your direct supervisors. Okay? Good. So again, you will see what we're talking about here. Alright? So, here, the bench height here is about 15 to 20 feet, which is good. For this one, alright? Nothing here. You understand what I'm saying? There's nothing here. And you've got about 40 feet drop right here. Okay? Now, this is the overburden that is being stripped off. And then they will tell you, well, it's either they're going to take the excavator in and they scrape the material and bump it up, or they come from the top and they scrape the material and roll it down and they wash the material. My thing is, once we are in the realm of medium scale operation, you must become a detective and you must use the full extent of engineering to bring this operation into platform. Otherwise, we are putting people's lives at stake and we are putting the repetition of the organization at stake. So really and truly, there's inadequate benching in this operation. If I were to give this a score, I would give it 20. And I would cease operation, cease work on this operation, as it is. Until it comes to a point where I, dis where I showed to you before in the model mine, where you saw benching, adequate benching. Don't ever 
think about what happened in the past. Think about what happened in the future. And that is why I want you to understand. And I'm bringing out this discussion so that you will understand that this is not acceptable. So while you see the people working, it is not for you to believe that it is an acceptable standard. Okay? And that's what I'm bringing out here today. Good. We now have a look. So you see the doses at the back there, leveling out stuff. Mm -hmm. See he's rolling, you know. As the guy rolls it back to a spot, he comes with the doser and just. All right? And in a sense, this is building a kind of an embankment um, as they keep doing that because it's going to be compacting stuff here, okay? So this is where the guy is rolling it. He's rolling it there. The dozer man was spreading it out. If you notice, the the so they, they make some effort, hold on a minute. But if you notice here, what is happening here is that they're trying to level out that bump from the top there, right? To, to clear up there, but that has nothing to do with that face. It's still going to be on C, or it has to be designed, it has to be checked. And that is one of the things that needs to happen. Like I said, this is a medium scale operation, and as such, it must be affording great scrutiny, engineering ones. Now, what will it cost the miner to, you know, do? Dollars in fuel and workmanship to bring this into conformity. Now, we're not talking about at the back here, where we see it, okay? But at least you're in a you're going to the front, to the, to the southern end, and as you're going to the southern end, there is an eastern face. So how can you go forward? How can you mind going forward here if you don't secure or create a safety to your, to your sides? You know, you can't just be concerned about the front. Failure may not happen from the front, but it may happen from the side. Right. And that's what I'm, I'm advocating. It must be considered. All right, enough on that location. The other location that I want to bring to your attention I visited this site in January. This is, a, this is Mr. Michael Alfonso location. Titus Alfonso is the GM. Okay? Now here is the group taking a sample of what they are working in terms of the gravel that they will be working. Now this is a slingy material. This material here, when I came in January, this material was not in this state. And I'm telling you as in last month, January 2016. Now that the rain has fallen over the past week or two in Malia, it has now changed the physical makeup of this material and it is you now slingy, right it's running. Yeah. You see a set of tensional cracks have developed inside of these right. these pieces, the right, right? All of this material is slumping and, mm -hmm. and even the, mind, the general manager yeah. tell me, you know what? And I could have told you, I was here in January and his, I have pictures to prove 
um, that he did good work. He actually created benches. But what has happened is that with the rain that is falling, the material start to run. And that is the thing I'm trying to say to people. You may have material standing up competently in the dry season and with some prolonged period of rain, and that's one of the causes of failure, slope failure. Heavy, excessive, prolonged rainfall. And these things cause people to die. We have case studies where we are looking at in our course with Mr. Series, and it will show you that, you know, dams fail where engineers design them. So you may have structures that are engineer design or a group of engineers design. And you know what? They still fail. You know why? Because of heavy, excessive rainfall alone. Now if you have a structure that is not designed by an engineer, but is designed by a miner, as he so pleases to carve it out, I go carve out this party. Then you see the risk is increased more of failure happening here. Okay? So basically, you like control problem, but it's not the same control. Did you make it wrong? I didn't hear you. Sorry, it's sonic control problem. Uh -huh. What is control problem? Uh, prevent erosion, erosion. Okay, yes. Good. So, what I want to demonstrate in this video is not so much the, the pit being unsafe as a lack of benching, but to demonstrate the competency of the material, the runniness. The movement, the soil creep of the material due to rainfall that has happened in Mali over the past week. And I'm bringing to your attention that this entire location, when I checked it in January, I would have given it an 80%. Now, because of the rainfall, and looking at, you know, there's no benching because the thing is just slide down and slope down and run down. And they're not even, they, they're just mining anything that came that is coming down to them. That's what they were working. So the gravel is right next to them. And that is what the students are sampling. All right? A little slump of material. So they're working the slump going forward <laughs> to the pit, to the, to the mine face. All right? This is the adjacent to that. I, I, I'm not certain this is whose operation, we haven't visited it, but um, this is next to Alfonso, all right? Um, I'm not certain whose operation this is, but this is something for you guys to check. Um, nobody's mining here, as you can see, but there's something bumped up there, you see some material bumped up there, and there going to work it. Alright? Um, I want to believe this is um, German and Couchman. That is where German and Couchman is. By remembering the same wash plant. Alright? A couple of weeks ago, as a matter of fact, I was in here in January. And this site here, I, I actually took pictures of this here. You see again the material, how it slumps down. What you see here is movement of material due to rain. Okay? This, this was, this was a, a um, yes, it was one drop, one bench. But now you see the material slump downwards and cover this, this one drop. Of, of material of, of bench that was there, which could maybe have been maybe about 40 to 50 feet. All right, and I can I now recall this here is where German German um, German what is his name? You know German, right?
So this is where Jarman is working or was working. Is I think a ceasefire order was placed on Couchman nearby. Because um, if, when you look at this site here, um, you know, without this slumping, and I will bring the video a little bit so you can have a look. At this location here, I had um, advised the mines officer to give a ceasefire card on couch one. And I think what happened here, it looked as if they blocked up this, they throw some stuff here. Alright? It looks as if they throw stuff here. Um, I don't know if it's the, the last mines officer caused them to throw stuff here or what. But I asked them to not to work here because it, the face was too steep. The face is too steep. Steep face is now medium scale, scrutiny. Small scale, foolishness happens. They have some small scale operation, behave as if they are medium scale. They want to mine a facing that is 70, 80 feet. And one drudge going to that face. All right? And that is exactly what is happening here. One drudge wanted to mine this whole face here. And this face is about 70 feet and so on. We have to be very careful of these um, these movados. Alright? And Couchman was one of such movado. Okay? Because he was boring a hole in here and you can still see the hole um, somewhere at the top here, all right? And he wanted to keep working there, and you have all this material to your left. Again, his focus was the front, but when you look to his left, it's a drop that is 80, 90 feet. As you can see here, this same material here, one drop from here to here, he working here, right? But he ain't checking with the air because in the front, the face is far, right? It got bench at the front, but not on the side. So then what they're saying is that the material could only fail from the front and collapse from the front. It can't collapse from the side. But we have to correct that thinking because it can't fail from the side. And when this fail from the side, oh, they are dead. Yeah. Back, they are dead. There's no if or but. If a man is here and this material fails, this entire wall fails, they are dead. They are covered. Okay? And that is one of the things I want you to observe and to be aware of. Or you might find yourself having to run an operation. And one of the things, one of the main things that people does think is cost. Well, I can't do it, I can't do that, I can't do this, we can't do that, we can't do this. Well, if you can't do it, you can't do it, you have to move. Simple. If you can't take an excavator and roll back this stuff and create at least two or three benches so that this sidewalk could be safe, then find somewhere else to work. Go and work some tailings. You are ready to walk up on my face? Because this here creates the risk of a medium scale operation. This is where you will find a couple of judges having to deal with. No, but one man with one judge who can't afford, he wants to mine here. You can't. You can't afford, you can't find in that location. It's risky, it's too high. People want to find some high walls, next to some high walls, 60, 70, 80 feet. And they don't have the money 
to invest, to strip and cut down the wall and create the necessary thing. No, we can't do that. I'm sorry. So you're just saying, Mr. Daredevil, uh, where's Coach One? He was working on that? When I checked in January, I, I, I recommended that he be stopped. Oh, okay. But that wasn't that, that wasn't the photo that you were taking in January. This you is the photo that I took, but not with this slumping of the material. As you can see, this whitish right, material like slumping there. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That is how, um, you know, you can see the, the line. This is, for, this is failure. Right. And that is what I tell people, you know, one of the things when I came, I tell the guys, I said, man, you all got to strip off this material at the top here and roll it back more. They don't see the reason why. Well, the rainfall, and here is the reason why. You see this section here? It actually slipped and right. it come down. Right down in the Now, this is a small failure, but suppose now it was a larger failure. Right. This looks like a 15 feet um, escarpment that has been created. But suppose it was a 30 feet. Let's say from here to down here. You have a larger block of material, it's more volume, it's more mass. If they reach to the bottom and people are at the bottom, the volume is great to cover you or to trap you or to do something. It's a risk. So my second recommendation at this site is for, as it is right now, if the guys are working here, you know, I'm not seeing, I'm seeing the two judges set up here, I'm seeing the sluice box intact, I'm seeing the, the, the Marac engines intact, so that means they are wrong. You see the engines there? You see the, the water pumps there? So that means they're working. I would like to advise my colleagues to pay attention at this site. German, and I think the Scouchman, right here. And you can see the White House. So you know it's worth talking about. Alright? Now that is just two drone footage we took. He did an introductory level. And um, I, I said to him, you know, you've got to set up your, you've got to roll back the stuff, you've got to create your benches. I see him start, make the start. But I didn't get a check this afternoon, but I will check in the morning. And I know that you guys had the opportunity to check. And based on what you said, I, I know that Ian, Ian got to do what he's supposed to do. And he was having a conversation with me to probably try to explain to me why, you see, the problem is not, the compliance problem is a mindset problem. Yeah. That's the problem. We need to start thinking safety and what safety means. We need to have a clear understanding in our head as to what is safe. If we don't know what is safe, then we wouldn't understand this whole issue of safety. The engineers will say, well, it has to be designed, and based on the design, a factor of safety will be arrived at. Now, as I indicated to the GM, I said, look, you've got a big hazard we are working on, the right there, the yeah. side of the wall with this drain coming down. Yeah. You need to roll all this stuff back and cut some benches because now you in this rainy season, all these money, jet man, Moroccans and everybody in this, but yeah. in this drain, no yes. more way. Yes. Because he got 30 feet of gravel and the gravel wide and he was like smiling. Of course. You know? Yeah. I was smiling too because I got me. <laughs> <laughs> Real thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's not that these guys don't have the cap the financial capability to do what is right. I mean, you, you are a medium scale operation for a reason. The only reason why you have created such a deep pit is because there's something you're going after. Right. And if you could spend money to go after it, then you need to spend money to create a safe environment. 
And that is the mindset that needs to be enforced. And that is why I wanted to have this discussion. Okay? So I will...